Hey everyone, Steve Lantra uh, with Collider, and I am here with the people behind The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind. Uh, how are you guys doing? Good. Very good, yeah. Good. Um, as I was saying off camera just a little bit ago, uh, it was like 10 years ago that we first, I think it was my first interview with you, and it was like 07, 08. We were at the MySpace Cafe. MySpace. Which is uh, nearby, and uh, we were outdoors talking about Red, red Belt and some other stuff. And, I, and it, you, you can tell the difference between both of us because back then you walked up by yourself to do the interview. I walked up by myself to do the interview, put the camera on a tripod, and we just sat there talking. Yeah, I, I sometimes still walk places by myself. <laughs> <laughs> that, but that's rare. Usually there's an entourage with you. I've seen the paparazzi photos. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but what I'm saying is uh, now there's like a team of people. And, sure, uh, no, no, no. You know, we have actual cameras. and uh, So I, I appreciate you taking charity on me back then uh -huh. and giving me some time. Now we're, now we're knocking down the door. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, so... Uh, uh, I, I want to jump right on in first, which is a lot of people who will be watching this uh, won't have, have seen the, the movie yet. And sure. I hate asking the generic thing, but can you both talk a little bit about, talk a little about what it's about? Sure. So The Boy Who Honest the Wind is, is um, the story of William Kamkwamba, who when he was 13 years old was uh, in a situation with his family in, and his community in Malawi when there was a, a famine. A famine hit this this area of uh, of, of Malawi. Um, um, education in Malawi isn't isn't free in secondary school. He, so he was taken out of school, uh, and um, and the the family sort of and the community kind of knuckled down and braced for the worst essentially, and um, uh, this terrible kind of tragedy which which struck them. And in the in the time that this was happening, William managed to sneak into the school, sneaking back into school. He found an American textbook called Using Energy, and on the front of it is a picture of a windmill. And so um, he uh, started to uh, build together uh, using junk and scra uh, just uh, sc scrap metal that he could find in the local area uh, and started to put together a, a wind turbine in order to ultimately generate electricity, um, power water pumps, irrigate the land, uh, and end famine in the region. Uh, th your story is incredible. And it, I'm just curious, what has it been like for you uh, watching this whole thing unfold from because you've done interviews, you've been na people know you around the world. I'm just curious what this whole process has been like for you. Uh, it has been a little amazing uh, process to me. Um, when I was starting like building my windmill, I didn't imagine like he, one day I'll be sitting here uh, <laughs> answering like question, like interview. I was just like doing it like to solve the problem that we are facing uh, at that time. But to me, having a chance to be interviewed. Uh, I think that it's gonna uh, a lot of people gonna be able like to learn about my story. They might learn something about me that might help their uh, own lives. They might have, they might be facing some challenges, maybe the same challenges that I face, or it might be completely different challenges. But they m might be able like to learn from me and being able like to uh, to do what they can do in order like to help out with their communities and also like their families. I'm curious, with every movie that's based on something that really happened, you're trying to tell the most honest version of that story that you can, but you're also making a movie. So I'm just curious, balancing that line of fact versus fiction with what I'm talking about, and uh, so let me just start with that. Yeah, just, uh, I mean, with any film, exactly as you say, you know, you're trying to sort of balance those two things. You're trying to create a, a very, for me, I wanted to create a very authentic experience. This is why we shot in Malawi, we shot in in Wimbe, we shot right next door to William's house, actually, and um, and in with the community and some of the people that were uh, that are in the film experienced some of the things that ha that happened, you know, especially the sort of background and um, and the extras and stuff. So um, I wanted to really try and create that authentic experience at the same time. You know, this is a very epic story. It's an epic life, you know, and uh, and there are very epic lives that go on there, even though they're kind of these slightly remote areas of the world. And I wanted to reflect that in a kind of epic scale of, of um, of the film and and the scope of the film. Um, so kind of so it's question of sort of balancing that, and then you know when writing the screenplay and adapting the screenplay and condensing everything and streamlining things and trying to tell this story in a kind of condensed fashion, and using all of that to to tell the story in the in the most effective way, but maintaining, I hope, a, a, a real strong sense of its truth. Sure, I, I have to. Uh, I'm curious, what was it like watching the film for the first time, and what was it like for you? Because I'm sure did. I'm, I'm sure you were nervous the first time he's watching it. Um, so I'm just curious, what was your reaction as you're watching it, and what were you like? I had like um, 
it was like exciting and also like uh challenging at the same time i had like a mixed feeling because he, um there were like some some scene in the movie it takes me back in the time when you were like uh, the difficult time that we are going through so to relieve that to relieve that uh, situation to me it was very hard like remembering all the feminine thing like happening um not be for me not being able like to go to school remembering those like he, to me it was just like um it was hard um but there were like some moments that i was like wow um i remember this like exactly how i used like to do this uh this way and he, it brought like some little like good memories to me so i think i had like this type of like mixed feeling because of the uh the circumstances that happened when i was um when i was building the with me or like during the time that the hunger was going on within like the uh the country yeah i'm curious what we was it like a little bit of nail biting while he's watching it or yeah 100 percent. you know i was very i was ex- i mean i was excited for him to see the film but obviously you know just as william describes you know that these were very traumatic events for him, you know. So um, it was just a question of wanting to be uh, uh, truthful and not shy away from how difficult a situation he was in. Um, but also I was just aware that it was it's a complicated thing for him to watch and to relive and to go back into that, that space and that time. But he did an amazing thing. And, um, and I, you know, overall, uh, I just wanted to, to celebrate that and to celebrate him and celebrate his achievements. It inspired me. I think it could inspire so many people globally. So, what uh, I'm, I'm curious, how long did you know that you wanted to write and direct and do st- and, and become a director? And what is it like also uh, starring in the movie that you've written and you're directing? Because it's you know acting is a challenge on its own, yeah. and then you add the uh, everything else. Well, it was really his story that made me want to, to want to tell the story. You know, like I just uh, that, and the process started with kind of adapting. Start, you know, about ten years ago, maybe not long after we met. <laughs> sure, uh, <laughs> maybe you inspired me. I don't know. That, it's possible. No. The um, you know, and then sort of starting with adapting, and then you know, really meeting William, going back and forth to Malawi over several years, and then. Um, and then realizing that I was very much inside the story and I wanted to direct the film and, and all of those things. And then the process of actually doing that is, uh, is really only possible if you're going to try and put on all those hats, if you have just a strong team of collaborators that you're working with. And I was very lucky to have, you know, Tule Peak, who's an extraordinary production designer, designed uh, City of God. Uh, and Bea Salgado, who's the costume designer in City of God. So they all came out from Brazil. Dick Pope, the cinematographer, is incredible, uh, you know, yeah. a, a legendary cinematographer. And, um, and a brilliant Valerio Bonelli, who's a, is our editor. And they were all, um, you know, obviously Dick Pope, but also Valerio, you know, uh, you know, we all came down and camped out in the hotel together. And so we were just working through and talking and, you know, going, you know, going through everything every day, you know, very sort of intensely. and. And that kind of dynamic and those kind of collaborators allowed me the freedom to, to also you know, be in the film and feel like I could engage in being an actor as well. I'm, I'm always curious about the editing process. Uh, talk a little bit about what you learned in the editing room and maybe changes that you made based on, a res- on early screenings. Well, I mean, so many, you know, I think every time you screen the film and, you know, we were editing as we were, sh- as we were shooting. So... Um, so we would have ideas about how things were would would lay out and how things would work, and then we'd go out and shoot the next day, bring that stuff you know in, and then it would affect the nature of everything, and just keeping very alive to what people were doing, what actors were doing, and uh, and how um, their you know an actor's investment changes some of the narrative and what people are bringing to something, um, and then. Yeah, when you're when you're uh, later on going out screening the film, you know, testing the film, and um, and then bringing back that information and, um, and looking at some of the things you know uh, that things people say and people feel about it and all of that is just it's a great um, extraordinary learning curve a, a, an amazing process. I definitely want, I have to talk about Netflix and the fact uh, what what was the relationship like making the film? Just talk about working for them. So or working Netflix, with them. Yeah, yeah. And well, Netflix came on board after the film was made and um, and it's been exceptional. You know, and it's such a it's. 
um, you know, when I was first looking at the film and trying to make the film and trying to think and envisage how I would get this film out into the kind of global um, community, just, the, just globally, just get it released globally, uh, because I feel like it's such a global story and such an important story. Um, it was hard to imagine how that was going to be possible in the sort of uh, in sort of the traditional uh, model. Um, uh, you know, so there was always a concern that it would be a small, like a small film that wouldn't really find. And I was very determined to, you know, keep the Chichua language, you know, very prominent in the film. You know, there's a lot of English, but there's a lot of Chichua just to keep the sort of authenticity of the film and to the sort of its internal integrity. And, um, you know, but all those things have been sort of more challenging in the past. And then, and you know, and what's amazing about Netflix is that um, that there's there's this opportunity to have a limited theatrical release for the film, so people can see it in the cinema. But then also, you know, to go on the platform is to really do that thing and get yeah. it and get it right out there, and people have at least the the opportunity really to to really engage with William's story. So I couldn't be happier, you know, that uh, that it, that this has arrived now <laughs> as I've made this film, you know, to um, to really have a, have a real way of a delivery system for it. It, it's crazy. I believe it comes out on March first. Yeah. Um, it, it's it, it has. Is it a little weird to realize that on March first, I believe there's 160 countries that Netflix has that I mean, like the whole world on one day are going to be able to watch this story. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's 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 really like um, it's amazing because um, uh, for me, when I was writing a book with my co-author Brian, one thing that uh, we really wanted to do it's like. I really wanted like to share my story with the rest of the world, and the, uh, in March first, when the movie is gonna be able like being like released, some people who didn't uh, have a chance to read uh, my book, they're gonna be able to learn about my story through the movie. Um, so I'm I'm very excited to see uh, how how many people I'm gonna be able like to they're gonna be able like to know and to learn about like my story. Completely. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, you just there's a press release that just went out recently where you signed on to direct something else. Sure. Um, what What's the project? What's it about? And is it something that you're far along in development? So uh, yeah, the project is the the short and tragic life of Robert Peace, um, and um, it's um, an extraordinary book written by uh, Jeff Hobbs, who is uh, uh, Robert Peace's roommate at Yale. Uh, Robert Peace grew up in New Jersey, and um, you know, uh, in sort of what would be called kind of suboptimal circumstances. Uh, went to Yale, was an incredibly bright student, and <coughs> his life, um, you know, and, uh, took a very tragic turn. Uh, so it's a story that I have been very excited about, and, I'm, and we're in the process now of kind of fully developing the film, and so I'm excited to bring that. It's, uh, I, I, now that you brought it up, I'm remembering the story, and uh, it's about, if I'm not mistaken, it's about someone who had a lot of, promise and ended up not fulfilling his hope the, the optimistic destiny that almost you know what i mean totally yeah uh, if i'm not mistaken yeah yeah uh, uh so do you have a script are you writing it i am i am adapting the book yeah and so are you in if you started writing i have yeah and so where are you in the writing process i am in the writing process <laughs> <laughs> i am br taking a break from the writing process right. to, to to promote to, your other movie <laughs> exactly uh well i'm just going to ask you about the writing process because is is do you find that a lot of writers I speak to, they talk about, and, and also for you, they talk about with the writing process having like a magic hour where they wake up and they feel very creative and they can write for a few hours and then they feel like tapped out and they have to do other things. And others can write from like nine to five every day. It's just their job. Uh, what was it like for you writing the book? And did you have a certain type of thing? And what's it like for you as a screenwriter? I, th I think for me it was more of like just like remembering uh, the events that took place and the... Uh, putting that like down into uh, into a paper, uh, everything that I could remember, just like putting like down and then uh, sharing that with my my co-author, and my co-author will be able like to um, relate that into like English, and then um, sharing back with me, um, say like, is this what he, um, you you really is this what you meant? So some areas I'll be like, oh, okay, uh, here, like you misquoted me. I meant like this, I meant this. So that process, it was, we are like doing it like over and over. So it didn't have like, I didn't have like a specific time to say like, this is the morning that I'm going to be like lighting. But sure. anytime I'll just like remember, oh, like uh, on this day, like this is what happened. Yeah. 
Um, I'm sort of a bit of both, actually. Both of the ways that you describe me. Like, I kind of end up sometimes being able to um, <clears throat> you just work through the day, but most of the time it's like a specific period of time that seems good, you know, and then, um, and then, and then it turns to kind of wading through jam, and uh, I stop. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Uh, before I run out of time with you, one of my anticipated films of this year is something called The Lion King. No, oh, right. Yeah. It's this, this small movie that no one's heard of. That um, there's a company called Disney that's making it. Right. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, you're voicing Scar. That's that's true. Um, what the hell has this process been like for you being a part of that movie? It's amazing, you know, and um, I'm very very excited about the um, about the year and uh, excited for people to see it I think it's going to be spectacular I think uh, John Favreau is you know incredible and um, and I think it's going to be fun I saw at D23 and maybe at Comic-Con the opening uh, the opening of the movie and it's you know very similar to the animation and I, I think I was I had goosebumps I was tearing up I'm like oh my god this is going to be amazing <laughs> what, have you seen footage I've seen a bit of footage, and uh, and obviously I've seen you know the, the, that that footage as well, and um, you know I'm just so thrilled about it, and uh, I cannot wait for people to to pe people to see it. I know you're you're talking without talking. I'm trying to get a little yeah. You know no, I, mean? I don't know what to say. I, I wish I could help you, but the <laughs> <laughs> I'm like I'm just teasing you. But uh, I guess I'll just say, is it one of these? I'll, I'll leave it with this. Is it one of these things where you've done a lot of recording, or is it sort of like you've gone in once or twice? Do you know what I mean? It's a bit. I've done a bit of recording, yeah, and um, you know, so it's it's you know it's it's an in, it's an intense experience, and um, and also the kind of just the, you know just what it means is so vast and huge, and uh, what it means to so many people, myself included, and uh, so I'm very excited to bring this sort of updated version of all of this to a you know to back to all of us and then sure. obviously to this you know, this new generation so it's exciting stuff i was going to say it's going to be a worldwide event when it comes out yeah so uh, enjoy <laughs> um i'm super happy you guys got to come in today uh i thought you did a great job and your story is amazing um sincerely thank you for coming in um Pleasure. i look forward to your next film after this thank you thank, thank you, you. thank you